Father, we thank you so much for the day. We thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be here this morning. We thank you for the season that we're in. We thank you for the reason of it. And we thank you for your son. Father, help us this week to remember it's all about him. It's not about us. It's not about the gifts. It's not about Santa. It's not about... It's about your son. And help us to remember that as we gather together with family. As we gather together with friends, help us to remember Christ and all. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for allowing us to worship you this morning. We just pray that what we do and say are pleasing in your sight. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, please stand. <clears throat>
with someone next to you, two, the New Testament, the book of Luke, in chapter two, starting in verse eight. Depending on the version of the Bible you are using, you may notice a word here or there that's different than what I'm about to show you, but I want you to see just how accurate this video clip is. Jesus is coming. 
and he did. However, and he knew there was going to be a however, ultimately he came to give himself up for us, a ransom for many, as told to us in Matthew 20, 28, and Mark 10, 45. Moreover, from God's perspective in the Gospel of John, in chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. To have the power that Jesus did, or should I say, has, to have the power that God has, and yet, he loved us that much to humble himself to become a human, a human baby. I don't have to go into any detail of Jesus' sacrifice. You're probably already aware of what happened. But hopefully you are also aware that Jesus went to the cross willingly. It says so in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 18. Jesus says, No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I have received from my Father. So we've come a long way from, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown, to I lay it down on my own initiative, to this point now where we can remember God's sacrifice, where we remember Jesus' sacrifice. Emmanuel, God is with us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word, whether it's in our hands or the word, Jesus, that we can know what the real meaning is, and we don't say that lightly, that while you did come to be born as a baby, you also came to die for us, and we thank you for that. And now we take this time to celebrate all that. In Jesus' name. I'm going to start off offering with <clears throat> letting those at home know that there are things that go on here that you don't see prior to the video. 
that being said, Becky had mentioned this morning that uh, some people don't come to church because they don't have the dollar or five dollars or ten dollars <coughs> with the plate. And uh, I have thought about that since she said it. And it's, it's sad that we would think or that we would make it hard for people to come because they don't have something to put in the plate. And I don't know if you remember a couple months ago I, I said, gosh, I, I'd like to set the plate on the floor and stand in it. Because it's, it's, it's about giving. I mean, I'll make no bones about it. We need offerings to have the building we have, to have the electric, have the air and all that, but it's, it's really not about that. I mean, it's about giving of ourselves to Christ. It's about being His. And when you're His, then you automatically want to give. And for some of us, it's, it's easier to give of, of tithes and monies, and for others it's not, and for some it's impossible. But when we give, it's about giving from our heart, giving with joy to God what we have. Maybe it's a talent. Maybe it's, it's just doing something as simple as sweeping a floor. Or maybe it's something like serving kids on that Christmas that we just did for the kids. Maybe it's, it's something like that. It doesn't have to be focused on the dollar. Yes, it's bad. We need it. But God supplies it. We have never been in need here that God hasn't supplied. And some of you can't give. But you have the ability and talents to give other ways and stuff. And so as we focus on the giving this, this time of year, I mean, we, gosh, we focus on giving gifts to everybody and stuff like that. Focus on what you can give Jesus this week. And the main thing he wants is you. Just you. To be obedient and follow and be his. If we're doing that, the rest comes really easy. So the plates have been set. If you have something to give, if you would like to do that, you can do that. Think this week of what more you can give of you to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the ability that we have to be yours. That we could be your gift. That we could give ourselves to you. Father, some will give money and some can't. Some will give a, a, a sweep at a floor or some talent. And that's what you require. That's what you want. Is us to be yours. And however means that we can be. So this morning we pray that you'll bless the gift, bless the giver. Whatever that gift <coughs> is, bless them for me. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.
We've been hit hard with the kids here lately with that little cold and flu thing. So, um, not the kids, but the parents. So the kids aren't here. Oh, I'm going to need to borrow them glasses. I'm thinking I could come up here to read. <laughs> John Eric's not here to steal his. <laughs> You're afraid to take one. So once again, Harvey is present. Uh, I'll start off with a, a Christmas parable by Louis Cassell. It says, Once upon a time there was a man who looked upon Christmas as a lot of humbug. He wasn't a Scrooge. He was kind and decent. He was a kind and decent person, generous to his family, upright in all his dealings with others. But he didn't believe all that stuff about incarnation which churches prepare for an advent and proclaim at Christmas. And he was too honest to pretend that he did. I am truly sorry to distress you, he told his wife, who was faithful, who was a faithful church lord, but I simply cannot understand this claim that God becomes man. It doesn't make any sense to me. He did not read Luke 2, verse 1. <laughs> uh, even if that showed up there. <laughs> that was magic. How did you do that? How did you do that? You said it. Didn't. I don't have the power. That's between Steve and I. Well, he said, I, I simply cannot understand his claim that God becomes man. It doesn't make any sense to me. On Christmas Eve, his wife and children went to church for the midnight service. He declined to accompany them. I'd feel like a hypocrite, he explained. I'd rather stay at home, but I'll wait for you. Shortly after his family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window and watched the flurries become heavier and heavier snow. If we must have Christmas, he thought, it's, a nice, it's nice to have it as a white one. Amen. <laughs> He went back to his chair by the fireside and began to read his newspaper. A few minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound. It was quickly followed by another, and then yet another. He thought that someone must be throwing snowballs at the living room window. When he went to the front door to investigate, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the storm. They had been caught in the storm and in a desperate search for shelter had tried to fly through his front window. I can't let these poor creatures lie there and freeze, he thought, but how can I help them? Then he remembered the barn where the children's pony was stable. It would provide a warm shelter. He put on his coat and galoshes and trampled through the snow, the de ever-deepening snow, to the barn. He opened the door wide and turned on the light, but the, dirt, the, but the birds did not come in. Food will lure them, he thought, so he hurried back to the house for breadcrumbs which he sprinkled on the snow to make a trail into the barn. To his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flop around and fly into his window, helplessly lying in the snow for some of them. He tried shooing them into the barn. By walking around and waving his arms, they scattered in every direction, except the direction of the barn. They find me a strange and terrifying creature, he said to himself, and I can't seem to think of any way to let them know they can trust me. If only I could be a bird myself for a few minutes, perhaps I could lead them to safety. Oh no. Just at that moment, the church bells began to ring. He stood silent in the white snow while listening to the bells pealing the glad tidings of Christmas. Then he sank to his knees in the snow. He says, Dear God, now I understand. Now I see why you had to do it. Do we see why he had to do it? Are we a lot like this man who doesn't get it? In Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, we going to read verses 12 and 13. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divining soul and spirit, joints and marrow. 
It judges the thoughts and attributes of our heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. Strange verse for the Sunday before Christmas, isn't it? But I want to talk to you about seeing. This man in the parable didn't see the purpose until the purpose was taught to him. We don't see a lot of things. I, I can think back when my kids were little. I even called up a picture yesterday that I have of Jacob in front of a Christmas tree about this big. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this. You can just see it on his face. It's this big. <laughs> you know? And just the look on his face, I don't ever, ever, ever have to get a present at Christmas. Ask my family. I'm probably hard to buy for because I don't want any. I, I, just, I just love watching others. I learned a, a lesson recently. I, I mentioned it in Sunday school and stuff. And I'm the type of person that if I need to get it done, I'll do it. Just, just me. And you know, someone say, "Well, I'll help you with that." I got it. Are you gonna? I got it. Some of you might have seen that, and and kids' Christmas came up. And uh, I was behind the gun. I'm just going to tell you, I was behind the gun. Because it was noon. Christmas was at 7. And I had not shopped yet. I didn't have any of the food, any of the stuff. I was busy doing other things. Well, some had to do with church, some didn't. Some had to do with just me. So I was busy. It's, it's that time of year where you get busy. Anyone here been busy this past week? Yeah. But I was busy. It, it got to it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got a shop. And so I was shopping and it just so happened that Dawn called me about 1.30. She got to get done with school. She says, hey, what's going on? I said, in my voice, I'm like, where are you at? <laughs> oh, leaving school. Okay, okay. I need potatoes. You've got to stop here. Sam's doesn't have what I'm looking for. Go by here and get, get potatoes. And she starts, well, what about, or what about, oh, yeah, 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 get that too. And, and yeah, you know, <coughs> I was just hurried. I got here from shopping at like 3.30. Hmm. 3. Three. Robin's watching me from the gas pump. I got here at 3. I couldn't tell. I, I thought it was 3.30. But, and at 3, I was running in the door with hams and all this stuff and saying, and something happened that day that does really normally happen is people started coming in the door, what can, we, what can we do? Well, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And Drew said to me, I thought you went home. <laughs> because I'm the type that I would stand in the kitchen and go, oh, do it this way. And, and I started to, I mean, everyone was doing everything right but Drew. <laughs> he started taking all the boxes of macaroni and cheese, and you got to make it by the... Me, I would have made it by the box or by two boxes at a time or something. What? And he started opening them and pouring them all in a bowl. Amen. And I'm going, oh, does a, or the pot of water. And I got, let him do it. And I, I didn't help cook anything in the kitchen. And I didn't help uh, package it was anything. Really good this year. I didn't help anything. <laughs> I'm glad that Jeff did what he did because the sermon's over. No. <laughs> I really didn't think that, Jeff. I really thought we don't need a sermon today because that was excellent. To take us through and remind us of that. Time. But then I said, well, I had this prepared anyway. So. Um, but but I, stepped, I stepped back Wednesday night. I didn't do any of that stuff. I went over and said, Boy Scouts, you got everything? Yeah, yeah. I said, here's your hands. You're good to go. Okay. And... I stood out in the parking lot. For the whole event, I was out here. And every vehicle that came in, I got to go up to the window and talk to it and stuff like that. 
and I got to see the looks. I got to see the tears in parents' eyes. I got to see the glee in kids, and, and one kid was, I just can't forget it. They had a band, the back door window would not open. She pushed the button, the door wouldn't open, and he started licking the window. Oh no. And he looks at me and he goes, he goes, food? Toys? Santa? And I said, yes, you get all that. I says, and you get to know what it's all about Jesus. And when I said that to him, he got all, he goes, you mean the baby's here? Oh. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's enough that you're out there with a couple of cars, I'm fighting back tears. I'm, I'm trying not to cry, I'm trying to be positive for them, but it's like, you can, you can see it. Now, I'm telling you all this because I want you to understand this, that God sees. God sees. And he saw us all Wednesday night. He saw those that couldn't be here but did, did gifts for the kids or did... I mean, we all took part in some way, shape, or form. You were part of that kid's Christmas, whether here or not. If you're part of the church and the church was there, involved in it, and God saw. And God sees with these eyes that we don't necessarily get. You see, I can stand here this morning and I can look at each of you and I can see you. I can see the color of your clothes. I can see the expression on your face. I, I, I can see everything. I mean, from here, you get this view of just open your eyes. Don't go to sleep. Okay. See, I can see everything. But it's like God has these penetrating eyes. God can, whether it's day or night, stormy or clear, no matter where you are, God sees you. The word God comes from the Greek theos. Theos means to see. I didn't know that till this week. I, I never looked that up. I didn't understand that God's very nature means to see. And what does he see? He sees beyond this. God sees your heart, that penetrating look that goes right into the very essence of what you are and who you are, and, and he sees it. And he doesn't just see it, he, he knows it. I mean, the song goes, he knows if you've been sleeping, he knows if you're awake, he knows if you've been bad or good. So be good, for goodness sake. That's God. God sees you like that. He sees your good and your bad. He sees your, your up days and your down days. He knows when you're happy. He knows when you're sad. God knows it all. The penetrating look goes right in past that facade that you're putting on. Everything's good. Well, we know it's not. We know it's not good. Some of you have sick loved ones at home or in a hospital. Some of you have lost loved ones. What a terrible year to, you, to lose a loved one when you can't even celebrate their life or, or have that celebration service for them. I mean, but God sees that and knows that. He knows your aches. He knows your joys. His penetrating look looks right into you. Zechariah 4.10 says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth. The eyes of the Lord runs to and fro all the earth. There is not a single inhabitant on this earth that he doesn't know. The sad thing is, some of those inhabitants that he knows don't know him. And trust me, you can't fake it. 
You can't sit here today and act like you know him. He knows. That penetrating look from his eyes. Job 34, 21 says, His eyes are upon the ways of man, and he sees all your doings. Ooh. Wait. He saw me do that Thursday? Yep. He saw me scream at my mom? Yep. He saw me disobey dad? Yep. He saw me mistreat my wife? Yep. He saw me get angry? Yep. You're not going to hide it from him. And so as we see the penetrating look of God, we have to understand that, man, we need that penetrating grace and mercy of his upon us, don't we? The way that he gives us, we talked in Sunday school, a second chance. An ability to, to do it again. Okay, I, okay, I blew it. Just say it to him. God, God, I blew it. You gave me this opportunity, I blew it. Let me try again. Give me another chance. Proverbs 5, 21 says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his going. And our, our, our ways of us are in his eyes. You can't escape it. You cannot escape it. So understand that. It's the penetrating look of God. His eyes are also precious. What do I mean by precious? God has precious eyes. God has loving, kind, compassionate eyes. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Look at how Jesus looked on sinners. And if Jesus looks on sinners like that and has compassion and stuff for them, how much would God be the same? I couldn't have laid it out any better. I had a section here to lay this out, but man, just go back to communion. And the way Jeff laid it out. Look how he laid out who God is and what, what he is and and. Jesus is God. They've both been here from the beginning. They have both seen everything to this point. His precious eyes even know tomorrow. How many, how many of you know tomorrow? You know what's going to happen or what you're going to see or what's going to happen. God knows. He loves you enough to know that to help take care of you to lead you through. In Ezekiel 7, 4, 9, and verse 8, I mean chapter 8 and 18, verse chapter 9 and verse 10, he says over and over, I will not look on you. to help you. I mean, one of the best verses there is Jeremiah. I know the future I have for you. A future of good. I mean, I, ha I know what I have for you if you would but what? Claim me. If we could see him the way he sees us. How many of you see God that way? How many of you can penetrate in and see the very being of God? How many of you can look at him and know how precious he thinks you are? How precious are you? Precious enough that he'd send his own son for you. And we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. We're getting ready, ready to celebrate that birth, that, that sending of God's love. That's what we're going to celebrate this week. We're, we're going to celebrate in, on Christmas Day the, the birthday of Jesus. And I know some scholars say he was probably born in March. And, and just by the equinox and different things going on for the star and everything, it was probably at this period. But throughout history, we chose a day and we gave it to him. 
And on that day, when you're eating a lot of food, remember his precious eyes on you. His penetrating eyes on you. And when you're opening up gifts and seeing the awe in children's eyes, remember his look on you. Remember what it's all about. So we have his penetrating eyes, we have his precious eyes, we have his providential eyes. Psalms 32, 6. See these glasses are no good. 32, 8. Psalms 32, 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Providential eye. God sees what's yet to come. God knows what's there. I mean, again, in Sunday school we're talking, and I said, there's times that I, I start out of the day this way. And you know what this way was? My way. I have five, five or six things I want to get done. And so I say, God, you know, come on, go with me. I drag him with me. I pull him with me. Or, or, who's leading? Right here. But if I understand this, his providential eye, he knows what's out there before I get there. And sometimes he goes, yeah, and yanks me to something else. Sometimes I go very willingly. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'm like, what? What? And I, I in my wisdom, think in my mind and tell God, I gotta get this done. Any of you ever told God what you've got to get done? Ever told God, no, no, no. It, in essence, I'm saying, no, no, no. My way is better. Any of you ever think your way is better? If you understand these three things about his eyes, this third thing, then he knows what's coming before you get there. And if we would but follow, how much better would life be in him? He says, I will teach and instruct you in the ways that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. He sees it. He's like, oh, hey, let's go this way. We, gosh, we said it about death. When, when my dad died, there was us kids praying God would take him because we know what was in store for him. Being half paralyzed, not eating food by his mouth, eating food for, for the rest of his life. And we're like, he don't want this. On the other half of the room is my mom praying, whatever it takes, I'll take him any way you'll leave him. God's provincial eye saw what was best. And he took them. Not only did we say that, Dawn said it about her dad. How can an alligator has a massive heart attack laying on a, on a fairway in a golf course? Jacob gets him to the car, to the truck, gets his feet propped up, gets him, does everything he can do for him, but we lose him. And Dawn's attitude about that was God was probably saving him from something that he saw down the road that would have been a whole lot worse. There could have been something, and it, went, it, was, it was quick. He had an opportunity to talk to Dawn and, and Mom and, and stuff, I mean, do those things, but it was quick. But the, the view is God's providential vision, sight, was more meaningful than ours. I remember sitting in a hospital with Teresa praying for Jeff. When Jeff had his heart thing, I mean, we were just like, when the doctor comes out with the words, we got it, he's stable, I'm going to tell you my thought. How? How? And he's still here today and doing the things that he does. God's provincial sight. His eyes saw something more that needed for Jeff. 
And if we could look at life like that, I mean, I can go through this room for each of you and tell you the story probably for you that would point you, yeah, yeah, God did that. Sometimes we don't realize it, but God did that. Not to harm you, to help you. Not to hurt you, but to make life better. And we sometimes are like, well, how is my life better without my dad? How is my life better without my father-in-law? How is my life better without? Trust God. He's seeing it all. He's seeing things that you're not seeing yet. He's seeing things. He has a plan. Now, I said in Sunday school, that is the biggest word I think that we have as, as Christians have is that word trust. Do you really trust God with all your being that what he has in store for you is better than what you have in store for yourself? That his plan is better than your plan? As we go into Christmas, we have to look. Look with the eyes of God. Try to penetrate into the people around you. Are they really okay or do they need something? Look, at the, look with eyes of, that are precious, that shows them the love the way that God shows us the love. Help Him to see that love in us. That care, that compassion. And then try to see provincially <coughs> for people. Try to see and lead them what is good. I'm going to tell you what's good this Christmas. Jesus. Jesus is good, always has been good, always will be good. It's a gift that you can give someone that doesn't fade away, that doesn't break, that doesn't... But it's, it's the gift that we have in our own selves. It's the reason you're here this morning. You came because of Jesus. And we have the opportunity this week to give that away. And the neatest thing about it is, I can give you a set of Legos. Some of you are going to go, yes. Some of you are going to go, Legos? Why did he give me Legos? Some of you will be like, what can I make out of that? Some of you are going to look at it as, I'm going to end up on the floor, I'm going to step on it, I'm going to scream and fuss, I'm going to... It's how you look at it. But if I give you Jesus, how many of you are going to go, what is that for? How many of you going to think that it's going to end up on the floor of rope and you're going to stomp on it? How many of you think that you won't be able to build something with him? I mean, I'm standing before you and he is building in me every day. Brick by brick, piece by piece. And sometimes he reaches in and takes a brick out. You know what Ricky takes out? That's the wire goes in. And he goes, no, 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 no. That goes here. So that I can be made the best that I can be. He has the vision to see that. He has the knowledge to do that. If we would trust him to build us as he sees fit. So this morning, with that vision, look at your life. Look in. Look deep in. Is he yours? Is God able to look at you and go, mine, mine, mine? There should be no doubt about it. Are you His? If you're not, man, this Christmas, give yourself the best gift you could ever give, except take the gift of God, put it in your life, and see what happens. If you're wondering, 
not sure, take the gift of Christ more into your life. See if it doesn't make a difference. God's looking. God's watching. God sees it all. What does He see in you? We're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation.